Before I enable multi-factor authentication, I will first validate that whether the user has the multi-factor authentication already configured. For this, I will access the outlook.office.com, will access the Office 365 application and will log in with the user account LX to see whether there is any multi-factor authentication configured or not. Well, I will click next and will provide the password for this work or school account of LX. Here we realize that there is no multi-factor authentication and user will be able to access the application without any MFA required. Well, the user can access this application. Now, as per the scenario, Alex has agreed to test the multi-factor authentication for you. And uh, now you are going to leverage the per user multi-factor authentication in Entra to test or do the pilot testing of uh, multi-factor authentication. For that, you will log into the Entra portal. I will switch to a server where I have the Intune portal already launched and I will be launching now Entra portal. This is entra.microsoft.com and uh, I will log in with the same admin account, the global admin account with the single sign on. I will need not to provide the account because it's already logged in in Intune. Well, through this account, I will configure the multi-factor authentication in the free search i will look for multi-factor authentication and will launch the service from here from the multi-factor authentication we have several settings that we can configure the first thing first and that is to configure the any additional cloud-based multi-factor authentication settings you want to do so you have an a hyperlink here and uh, where from you can configure the user settings to enable or disable the MFA and the service related settings as well. So some server side configuration that I want to turn on is let's say for the trusted devices of users, I want to specify few days of caching so that the multi-factor authentication is not asked. So I can do such settings here, service settings like the app passwords, trusted IP addresses, so if the user accesses the applications from this trusted IP, then will not need not to provide the multi-factor authentication. I will remember the multi-factor authentication on the trusted devices. This allows users to remember multi-factor authentication on devices they trust. Between one, two, three, sixty-five days we can configure. In my case, I will set it to 30 days and will save this configuration. Well, after this, I will enable the per user multi-factor authentication. This was the server setting. I can either go back to the user settings or I can go to the users blade on the left, all users. Users, I'll go to per user MFA. And uh, here from the users, I will pick the user LX Wilbur to whom I want to enable the MFA and will click on the enable MFA button will enable the MFA from here. You will see enabling multi-factor authentication and that is done. Now the next step is to validate that whether this MFA is enabled or not. For that, I will switch to the client machine to pretend the login of user LX Wilbur. LX tries to access the Office 365. This is outlook.office.com and uh, Alex will log in the same way earlier it was done but this time it will need additional information to register for the MFA and uh, that you can do in different ways either through a mobile phone through the OTP or a uh, call that you can configure the MFA or you can use the authenticator app from Microsoft well, in my case, 
I will go with this more information required and I'll go with the authenticator app, which I already have on my phone. So in case you don't have this app, you can download it from the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. Now I will click on the next. And uh, if you want to set up a different method, so you have option at the bottom, I want to set up a different method like a mobile phone. I'm going with this QR code. So in the application, once you have installed it on your phone, so you have two options either to add the uh, personal Microsoft account or work or school account. So this is my work or school account. So I will add this and to add it. In fact, I have two options. Either I can sign in with the account or use this QR code. So I'm scanning the QR to add this account. And once I have scanned it, the account is added. I will hit next. Now it will validate the configuration by providing this number to enter. I will provide this number. I will enter it and will approve the notification I have received in the authenticator app. From the authenticator app, you can do the authentication in different ways, either through this uh, notification where you can tap on yes, it's me or no, it's not me to do the authentication or you can use the verification code also that is populated and refreshed every 30 seconds in the app. Now I will click on uh, no, I don't want to stay sign in and will log into the outlookoffice.com. And there you see that the multi-factor authentication was tested and uh, is done appropriately. So the pilot testing is completed for this multi-factor authentication. Now I will disable this multi-factor authentication. To do this, the steps will be almost same that we used to enable the MFA. I will log into the Entra portal will select the user and will disable. Well, this window is not yet refreshed. So I will refresh this page. I will go back to the users and uh, per user MFA. Therefrom, I will select the user Alex and disable the multi-factor authentication. Now we can validate that the multi-factor authentication is disabled user need not to perform the MFA this time. Well, I will close this window. This was the implementation of our first scenario of the first exercise to enable the per user MFA. I will switch to the client machine and will log in to show you that this time the MFA will not be required because this has been disabled. I will visit outlook.office.com. We'll log in with the account Alex. And the password. And there is no need to do the MFA this time since the MFA is disabled for the user. Well, this was the scenario one implementation of per user MFA. Well, next scenario was about the conditional access policies, how we can leverage the conditional access policies to implement the multi-factor authentication. Conditional access policies are if then conditions where we can have the triggers to trigger these conditional access policies. These triggers can be like user risk, sign in risk or can be different uh, scenarios and we can protect the cloud applications and control the access whether we want to grant or block the access. The option is available in Entra portal under the protection as conditional access or in the free search you can search for this conditional access. Here I will type the name for this conditional access policy 
account also MFA. The users or groups to whom I want to apply this, none all users selected users. In my case, as per the scenario, I will do it for an individual user for testing and this is for user LX. I will either select it from this list or we have a free search to select the users. Well, I will search for the user and choose it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the target resource that I want to protect through conditional access policy. This target resource can be a cloud app. It was formerly known as cloud apps. Today we call that as resource or resources. We have various options in fact, not only these resources, we have user actions or authentication context we can configure. These are the target resources we want to protect. In the resources, I will select a resource. We have options to include exclude. Right now it is set to none. Okay. So under the include, I can select all the resources or I can go with select resources and then therefrom I can select the cloud application that I want to protect. As you know or you see this, uh, it was known as cloud apps formerly. Now the rebranding is done as all resources. Here we go to the select and I will choose the Office 365 in this example. So this conditional access policy applies to Office 365 applications. Now we can go to the conditions in case if we want if we want to define any I have done a separate video on conditional access policies you can watch that from the description of this video I'll put the link here grant access and require the MFA that's my control and I will enable this policy and create it now it's time to validate this policy we will validate it that if user LX tries to access Office 365 application, it should ask for the MFA, even though the per user MFA is disabled because there is a conditional access policy in place with this scenario. Well, user goes to outlook.office.com and provides its credentials. So the target resource is the same as per the conditional access policy. The user account is also same for whom the conditional access policy was applied. I will sign in. And here you will notice that it required the multi-factor authentication. I will complete the MFA and will sign out from this account and in fact will show you accessing another resource like an Azure portal where the MFA will not be required because that does not match the conditional access policy. So here in this case with MFA, I'm able to access the Office 365 application. Well, let's complete this and sign out. And as I said that after this, we will test with another target resource which is something apart from the Office 365. This time I go with portal.azure.com. User LX, you will notice that this time the conditional access policy is or the criteria is not met. That is why the user need not to perform the MFA because it's not the Office 365, it's Azure portal this time. I will click sign in and will log in without doing any MFA. Well, this is the scenario two or exercise two where we tested this conditional access policy and uh, now I will delete or disable this conditional access policy. I will log in the log into the Entra portal this time 
on this client device itself rather than switching to the server and will disable the conditional access policy in fact will delete the policy i do not need it further the pilot testing is completed sign in now go to the protection and conditional access policies or search for that in the free search here conditional conditional access there can be multiple solutions coming up conditional access still not yeah it's there microsoft entra conditional access and i will look for policies i have one policy in place i will click on the ellipsis button and delete this from here click delete and that's done well this was the scenario too where we have tested the conditional access policies configured for multi-factor authentication based on the selected criteria. I hope this video was informative to you. Thanks for watching and do subscribe the channel for future updates on this channel. Thank you.